Hello, this is Alex Kappa, and today I will discuss a topic which I haven't encountered on YouTube yet, and I, and I wonder why that is, because I think this topic that I'm proposing right now is very intriguing and elegant, indeed. Uh, the topic in question is a hypothesis, or a theory, really, proposed by Lee Smolin called Cosmological Natural Selection. You might think that possibly there are parallels with biological natural selection, and indeed this is the, this is the case. This theory also suits to rebut uh, the fine-tuning argument, in my view, and also maybe the uh, first cause argument. Therefore I will build up this video in the following way. I will first address the theory itself with special emphasis on its premises and also on how it is scientific. And I will then discuss the implications it has on the fine-tuning argument and on the first cause argument. So here we go. If you, have a ba if you have a basic understanding of physics and cosmology, you will know that according to the general relativity in black holes and at the initial state at the Big Bang, there was an infinite density and time stopped. There was a th singularity. But the problem here is that general relativity breaks down here and um, no quantum effects are regarded. Therefore physicists hope that if you can somehow include the quantum effects and come up with a quantum theory of gravity, then, then the, um, the singularity will be removed and, and this could mean that time actually did not start at the Big Bang and does not stop in a black hole. Maybe even some physicists, among them Lee Smolin, have argued a black hole is a big bang for a new universe, which means that every time a black hole is created, a new universe is created. Now Smolin goes one step further and makes another premise, namely that the parameters set by the standard model, which are about 19, uh, they alter slightly in the child universe in comparison to the parent universe which you can compare to a mutation. If you're slightly trained in evolutionary theory, you will see that there, this is a foundation for a natural selection to act upon. Namely, because those universes which create more child universes will be selected for and become more numerous. Those universes which create most black holes will be numerous. Maybe, maybe there are also other ways to create u uh, universe, e.g. through the collapse of an entire universe. But one can at least say that universes which do create many black holes are rather numerous in the universe pool, or however you will call it. Um, if you now start with a simple universe in which the para parameters were set up in such a way that the universe would co collapse immediately, for the first number of generations, each parent universe would only create one child universe, meaning that there would be no ev evolution ta uh, taking place. Of course, only until the parameters change in such a way that the universe creates more than one offspring, which in turn would mean that these universes would become more numerous. We can see that at some point, universes which create black holes will become more numerous in comparison to, the, to other universes. Now, the hypothesis is only scientific if it can be tested, namely verified or falsified. And Lee Smolin has pr proposed some ways in which you can do it. And the theory predicts that this universe in which we live in right now has the param parameters set in such a way that it creates the mac um, close to a maximum amount of black holes. We, we can test this prediction pretty well by testing how changing the parameters, which effects that will have on the universe concerning creating black holes. Since there are 19 parameters, and you can change them upwards or downwards, there are 38 ways in which you can test this theory. And of course the premises which the theory has must be fulfilled as well before you even start testing it, so that's the first um, obstacle it has to master. What implication does this theory then have on the fine-tuning argument? Well, we can see that there are many universes now, and the parameters could be set in such a way that um, in one universe, uh, life can arise, and now if you take a bit, bit of an appeal on the weak anthropic principle, you can see why we are, we are in this universe which harbors life. 
But taking a closer look at it, you can see that only in universes which create black holes, life can arise in the first place. This is because the processes which are essential for creating black holes are also essential for creating life harboring systems. Things like supernova explosions, which are very important for creating black holes, but are also important for creating stars like our Sun and planets like our Earth in the first place. There are many other things which can be mentioned, but I think that it would exhaust both my time and your patience to list all of the criteria which are essential for creating black holes. But if you are interested in the topic, I, I would um, recommend that you read the book The Life of the Cosmos by Lee Smolin. But what this fact tells us is that those universes which create many black holes are very numerous because of cosmological natural selection. And therefore, universes which could potentially harbor life are not that rare at all. Now you would again have to invoke the weak anthropic principle and just say that because we live in this universe which can harbor life, we experience this universe. Maybe even, but this must not be the case of course, a universe which creates black, the maximum amount of black holes is also the most suitable for harboring life, which would make life ar arising very probable indeed. Now I also mentioned that this um, theory has an implication on the first cause argument. You might not see why that is. But for this you must go back to the universe we started off with before. Because this universe, which we have started off with, could have existed an infinite amount of times before. It, m it makes little sense to speak of a first universe, since the child universe is not meaningfully different from the parent universe until, it's, until its conditions are different enough for it to create several child universes. The way these conditions could have been in a hypothetical first universe are completely arbitrary. and insignificant, which in turn makes a first cause irrelevant. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you thought it was informative. Don't forget to comment in form of video or text and don't forget to rate. And if you like, my, uh, like this video please go and check some of my other ones and if you like them as well then please subscribe to my channel. And yes, I think that's it.